Here's how to boost your FPS in Marvel Rivals. Hello gamers and welcome back to the channel. On the left is Marvel Rival running without the FPS boost settings and on the right is the FPS boost applied. As you can see, we get about 60 to 50 FPS boost going from a low 40 to 60 FPS to around 100 FPS and all you have to do is change about 3 settings to get this level of performance. We will be using the GTX 980 with 4GB of VRAM but this should work for other cards like the GTX 780 Ti, the GTX 1060, the GTX 750 Ti, the GTX 1050 Ti and most cards with 4GB of VRAM or maybe sometimes 2GB and 3GB might work if you apply the final and last settings. Stick around as we go through each settings to see how much of a boost we get and whether it's worth maxing out all the tweaks. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more gaming benchmarks. Before diving into the FPS boosting settings, let's look at the raw performance you can expect with these cards. At 1080p low settings, the game delivered a steady 40 to 60 frames. During our testing, there was no input lag or frame stuttering, and the gameplay felt smooth. The visuals, well, they were just okay, I suppose. Not particularly impressive, but the game art style still manages to shine through, giving it a unique charm. For many, this level of performance might be more than enough to enjoy the game without a second thought, but we are not most people, are we? And like Oliver Twist, we want more. So let's see what sacrifices we need to make to push Marvel Rival to a smooth 100 FPS. Let's get into it, shall we? On screen, you will see the complete settings you will need to change to boost Marvel Rival past 60 FPS, but I didn't stop there. I took a step further to break down e how each change impacts performance so you can decide if it's worth it. The first thing we did adjust was frame generation, also known as AMD's poor man's DLSS. <laughs> I'm just joking. With frame generation enabled, we saw an immediate 50% FPS boost. That's a huge jump with just one tweak. Now, you might have heard some complaints about frame generation making visuals look muddy or off, but I didn't notice any of that. It seems the game's art style does a great job of masking any potential issues. Even better, there was no input lag or frame stuttering to speak of. It was a smooth experience from start to finish. Let's see what the next tweaks brings to the table, shall we? Next, we adjusted the resolution scaling from 100% down to 70%. This tweak added about 10 to 15 FPS to the game, a minor improvement compared to the boost from frame generation. However, for those of you running lower end GPUs, every bit counts, so it would make a difference. For many players, simply enabling frame generation might already provide a smooth and playable experience. But with 70% scaling, you will start to notice some compromises in the visuals, particularly with model textures. They look a bit less detailed and polished, though it doesn't take away from the overall fun of the game. Once again, the game as star does an excellent job of masking these visual issues, making them much less distracting than they might be in other games. Let's keep tweaking and see how far we can push the performance. If the previous settings still don't deliver performance you are looking for, here are my final suggestions. First, try lowering your resolution. If you are playing at 1080p, dropping to 720p will significantly reduce the load on your aging GPU, giving it some breathing room to push out higher FPS. Second, consider enabling FSR and settings, setting it to a performance or quality mode. Be warned though, this comes with visual trade-off. The game may start to look noticeably less sharp with textures and details taking a huge hit. However, if you if your main goal is to squeeze out every bit of FPS, this might be your best option. That wraps up today's tweaks. If you found this helpful, don't don't forget to like to don't forget to like and subscribe for more um, gaming uh, for uh, gaming tips. Cheers, I, I guess. <laughs>